Next up, I want to take a look at Bone Razor Minions. Bone Razor Minions combines an auto battler and a survivor roguelike to great success. You play as a necromancer who doesn't do any damage. Instead, you just command an army of the dead to do damage for you. It's a unique concept that's pulled off well, backed up by solid progression and all with a cute 8-bit art style too. I think initially it can be quite daunting, but that doesn't stop it from being fun. So let's just get straight into it. When it comes to the game modes and the ultimate goal for Bone Razor, Bone Razor actually has multiple different game modes or ways to modify your game. Unfortunately, I haven't played much more than the default game mode. There is an endless mode as you would expect and multiple doors within the home area that unlock after meeting certain upgrade requirements. I can only assume that these are difficulty increases of some sort, but I haven't checked them out yet. There is also this card game mini game that I haven't yet put any real time into, but it's there if you want to play it. Other than that, the main goal remains the same as the other games in the genre. Complete runs, Earn currency and spend currency on upgrades for your runs. I'll go into more detail later, but the main progression comes in the form of three trees, one for general upgrades, one for class specific upgrades, and the other to upgrade enemy forces to make them harder. When it comes to movement and aim mechanics, you don't need to aim in Bone Razor considering that all your minions do that for you, but you will need to dash. The arena is a little more confined, kind of like in Brotato, so the dash is crucial to your survival. Even more so given that as the run progresses, more elements of bullet hell are introduced like flying arrows or shots coming from enemies. In fact, the game is heavily reliant on your movement in combat to be the engaging part because you can't aim, you don't have any abilities other than one-time spells, and you only have the raised minions to do stuff for you. So some might see this as a problem. You know, maybe you want to be a bit more engaged, but remember what genre you're playing in. Also, I wouldn't worry too much because that design choice works here. You're engaged enough and it's fun as it is. When it comes to combat and sound design, as I mentioned in the previous section, this game is dependent on your dash and the use of spells for engagement. The rest of combat is basically just making decisions for upgrades and watching your minions do all the work. This is satisfying enough though. Like a good auto battler, you don't want to be super engaged. You want to chill and let your decisions speak for you and that's done well here and because of that, combat is fun. Sound design is super 8-bit, so the sounds aren't as punchy as in Vampire Survivors or Brotato, but they're fun to listen to and well made in their own right. The actual progression in combat is something I need to get used to. You can tell that there is a proper way to build your team of minions and choosing which ones to meld, upgrade or raise is a skill and I have yet to gain knowledge over that. I would love a bit more of an explanation in the game as to decisions to make, but building is definitely a skill issue here and not a fault of the game's design or UI. Progression and replayability are plentiful in Bone Razor and it's a strong point for the title. You'll spend earned gold on various upgrades on skill trees named Bone Raise Law and Heroic Force. Bone Raise Law is your general progression, providing access to Dash's utility and giving you access to different minions to raise as you progress, whereas Heroic Force upgrades the enemy forces, giving you more enemies to get resources from on your run. And I really like the Heroic Force upgrades. I think this is a creative way to not only spend earned currency, but also make the game harder while providing equal reward. Other than that, you'll spend what are essentially skill points on the class skill trees, and the game is pretty generous in how much it gives you to upgrade with, and I'm a fan of that, because there is a large range of classes here that need upgrading. You can also spend gold on a few other things such as traps and contraptions to be placed on the different available maps to help you out even more on your runs and to unlock those different maps you'll need to gain higher and higher scores on previous maps. I mentioned the card game earlier. You'll unlock cards for that game by playing runs and they'll drop randomly from what I can tell. There is a lot of progression here to keep you occupied on top of more than 100 achievements. This game isn't in early access and has had its full release and the content within fully backs that up. For the negatives for this game, while I like the art style, it is quite dark. There are visibility options including highlights around enemies and projectiles but it's still quite dark and sometimes it feels like the floor melds together which can make the visuals a bit of a mess. I've seen a couple Steam reviews saying the same thing that it's a bit hard to see so keep that in mind. While the game does have mouse support, initially some of the binds for movement and menu navigation were incredibly awkward and I had to change some of it because it wasn't super intuitive and that's the case to this day. I just can't get around some of the UI binds but it's not a super big deal and of course you can change them. Also, the language might turn people off, but I think you can also disable the old timey language. I just haven't figured out where in the menu it is yet. The last negative for me might be my own fault, but as I mentioned before, I can't really figure out how to optimize my builds or what I'm actually doing most of the time when I play. This is totally dependent on playtime, obviously, but generally games give you fundamental lessons as to what's good, what to avoid, how to become more powerful, etc. But this game doesn't really help you with that. And so for most of my playtime, I've spent it being kind of clueless. And I wish there was just more resources teaching me how to play. But even when I search on YouTube, there isn't much to help either. I'll play more to learn, but for my initial few hours, the game wasn't super helpful 
helpful in teaching me how to play properly, so keep that in mind. But overall, Bone Razor is an unsuspecting banger of a game with a ton of content to keep you occupied, well worth the money you spend on it if you like games like this. It's a unique addition to the genre. Mixing the survivor horde-like games with an auto battler is kind of genius and I highly recommend it.